Hey everyone, my name is Abhishek and today we are going to create this beautiful picture fly through slideshow animation in After Effects without using any third party plugin. So let's see how to make this. Alright, so right now I'm in After Effects and I've already imported a couple of these images. Now it's completely up to you, you can just import whatever images you want and after that you are ready to go. So first we will begin by creating a new composition. Let's call this one main. Width and height will be 19, 20 by 1080, frame rate 30 FPS and duration you can pick whatever you want. Just click on OK. Now once you're done with this, we are going to quickly create one more folder and I'm going to call this frames because we are going to create individual frames for all of these pictures. So actually it's quite easy. So first I'm going to create a new composition. Now for this one, we are going to change its width and height so i'm going to change this to 1080 by 1350 which is going to give me the aspect ratio of 4 is to 5 now this will create a vertical sort of composition something like this which is perfect for some picture frames so now in order to create the frame what we have to do is just make sure you are inside the composition first we are going to create the border or the outline so for that just make sure you are inside the composition and you can double click on this icon and it will create this shape layer now make sure that the fill is set to none. So if it is set to some color, just click on this fill and from here just set this to none. And after that you can just set the stroke color to white or whatever color you want. And just stroke width you can set whatever you want. For this one I'm going to set this to something like 120 like that. Now I don't want to accidentally move this so we can just simply select this and let's lock this layer. Now you don't won't be able to select this accidentally. Now all we have to do is just simply drag our images like that. Now press S and just scale this up and just place it however you want. So here you can see we have created our first frame. And the same way we are going to create the other frames as well. So let me just quickly rename this to frame one. Now you can select this and let's drag it into this folder. Now select this, press Ctrl D to create the frame two composition. Now let's open this up. Now I'm going to select this and just select whatever image you want and just hold on the Alt key and just replace the image. Now play around with its scale and just place it however you want. So here we have our second frame. Now let's select this, press Ctrl D, open it up, select this, hold on the Alt key or Option key if you are on Mac, then just simply drag and just pick whatever image you want like that now if you want to have few frames that are going to be like horizontal so then you can just simply play around with the composition so i'm going to just simply go into the composition settings and from here i'm going to change the value so instead of 4 is to 5 we can just simply set this to 5 is to 4 and after that just lock this and i'm going to set the top value to 1080 now it will give me a horizontal sort of composition like that now we have to first select this and let's delete this because we have to create the frames frame once again so just double click on it and it will create your frame and now we can select this and just scale it out however you want so here you can see we have this horizontal sort of frame now in the same way you can like have multiple bunch of different frames for all of these images so i'm gonna just come up once it is done so here you can see that i have already created all the frames for all of these images so these are just simple frames and once we're done with this we are ready to like animate these out so first we are going to create another composition so this one i'm going to make this like 2000 by 2000 so make sure to uncheck the aspect ratio so i'm gonna make this like 2000 by 2000 and let's call this one bg for background just click on ok now i'm going to select all of these frames and let's just drag them into this composition then you can press s to like scale these down a little bit and after that i'm going to just place them randomly one after other but first I'm going to select one of these and let's search for drop shadow and I'm going to apply it onto this. Now we can play around with its values. So let me just quickly place it like something like that. So all we have to do is just increase the softness. So here you can see we are able to see the drop shadow. So I'm going to set this to like 150. It looks good to me. Perfect. So now we have to like copy and paste this property to all of the other layers. Now here's a quick tip for you now if i just copy this and just paste it onto this layer now if i have to change the property so let's say i want to like increase the drop shadow i will have to go to each and every layer and i have to do it manually but there is a quick hack to this so if i select this here you can see i can select the property now if i go to edit here you can see we have this option for copy with property link or relative property link just simply select them now you can select all of these layers and just press ctrl v so it will paste the effect now if I change the value over here, you can see that all of these will have this, this value change just like that. So in the same way, you can like control all of these properties. So once you are done with the 
this and all we have to do is just simply randomly place them here and there so i'm going to place like some of these images at this point there you go now we have all the images and this is going to act as a background for our main composition so once you're done with this let's go back to the main comp and i'm going to quickly drag our background composition now there's one more thing that you have to do because we are going to deal in 3d so i'm going to quickly select all of these layers and just enable the 3d option so that all of these layers are 3d now let's go back to the main composition and i'm going to make this 3d as well and also i'm going to enable the collapse transformation so i can access all of these from here only now before we continue if you enjoy my content and you want to support me then you can check out my patreon page over there you will get access to the tutorial project files and exclusive templates that are available only on patreon so if make sure to check it out link for that is in the description now let's continue now once you're done with this we are ready to add a camera to our scene so for that you can right click and let's go to new and i'm gonna add a camera and i'm using this 35 mm so just click on ok now we need a null object as well so right click new let's add a null object make sure that it is 3d as well now we can select the camera and i can parent it to the null object so we can have a better control on it perfect so now we have to like arrange this so in order to do that we can just click over here and we can switch this to two view so now our screen will split into two views so this is showing us the screen which our camera is seeing but this is going to show us the top view like this so over here we can select the background and now you will notice that i can just simply move it in the z space like very far away so it is completely up to you, you can just move it however far you want like that i will notice that it will make our composition smaller so we can compensate or like we can fix that by simply increasing its size to something like that perfect so i think this looks good and we are ready to now add our frames to this as well so first i'm going to like select let's select a couple of these so i'm going to let's select seven but it's completely up to you. you can just select all of these frames and just drop it over here so perfect so here we have our frames again i'm going to just quickly apply the drop shadow over here as well now i'm going to just increase this to something like 150 let's copy it or we can just go to edit and let's copy with relative property links then just simply select all of them and just press ctrl v to paste them perfect so here we have everything now first i'm going to hide the background because we don't have to actually see it now i'm going to select all of these and you can see that we have everything over here now first thing i'm going to do is just make all of these layers 3d like that now we have everything over here now our next step is to like align them in 3d space so for that i'm going to select this first frame and we can probably select all of them and let's hide them for now so that we can see what we are doing so here we have our first frame and i can just simply move it like a little bit back you don't have to like move very far we can just move it to this side and after that you can press r to like have little bit of rotation in the 3d space like that perfect so here we have our first image now let's enable the second frame here it is and i'm going to just move it like a little bit behind this not like completely far away and then just simply place it to somewhere around this side we can probably move it down or up however you want and you can play around with their size as well i'm going to make this one little bit smaller let's press r to rotate it like that yeah, i think this looks good for this one we can probably like move it to a little bit this side so that our camera can like focus on this one then we can like move to this one perfect let's enable the third one so the basic step is like the basic idea is very simple all you have to do is just align them in the 3d space however you want let's align it over here we can probably move it like to the top as well and let's press r over here and just rotate it like however you want perfect we can play around with the scale later on you don't have to worry about it let's enable the fourth one and we have it over here let's just place it like somewhere around here and i'm going to like place it little bit down below like that let's press r and let's rotate it something like that now you can play around with this scale if you want you can like move them a little bit more far behind something like that 
perfect so in the same way you can like just enable all of these and just keep on adding them and you will have like a bunch of different images in the 3d space now once you're done with this i'm going to skip that part and i'm going to just focus on the animation now so once you're done with this we are ready to animate our camera and the null object so let me just quickly show you how to do that so let's switch this to one view and i'm going to switch this to fit to 100 perfect so here we have the camera and the null so i'm going to select the null and for this one we are going to add keyframes for the position and on the camera we are going to add keyframes for the rotation or the orientation whatever you want let's add keyframes for everything now in the beginning we can probably select this and we can just like move it a little bit far away like that now you can see that this is like quite big so we can just make them play around with their scale make a couple of these smaller however you want so now let's go to somewhere around one second and i'm going to like move this so you can see that we are moving forward like that now i want my camera to like look into this image so for that we can play around with these properties so you can play around with the x value to like look up and down and you can play around with the y value to like look here and there like that so here you can see we are like going and looking at this picture and after that let's go to somewhere around two seconds and again we can probably zoom in because we have to like look into this other picture so for that we can change the camera to look over here using the y rotation and let's look a little bit up like that perfect so here you can see we are moving and we will look at the first picture then we will look at the second picture now let's go to three seconds and again we can like probably zoom in a little bit more now we want to look at the other picture which is like at the top so you can play around with these values however you want like that now i'm going to like zoom in a little bit more now this image we can like place it a little bit more far away somewhere around here so that we can like move past this image which is in the front like that now just play around with the camera there you go here we have our next image now let's go to somewhere around four seconds but i think we have like moved that picture like way too far so we can probably move this like far away as well perfect now let's go back to the one view now we have to look at the other picture so which is this frame number four and let me just quickly zoom out so you can see that it is somewhere around here so for that we can like move our camera to like look a little bit down and to the other side somewhere around here now we can like tell it to like move in like that now in the same way you can like just keep on going and just keep on looking at the other pictures as well so here we have the basic animation let me just quickly preview this out you can see that it is going and it is like moving to these pictures and then it is going to this one now the motion is not smooth and it is going very fast so we can fix everything by simply selecting all the keyframes then you can press f9 to ease them first we get, we can like make this a little bit slow by simply selecting all of the keyframes now you can hold on the alt key or option key on mac then just simply click and drag these keyframes so it will spread them out now this will basically make your animation like a lot smoother like that there you go now the problem with this method is that it is very smooth now the problem with this is that if you play you can see that our camera basically stops somewhere around here then it starts again and then it stops at this one and then it again moves now if this is something that you want then you can go with it but if you want to like make this even more smoother then there is one more thing that you can do now in order to make this like even more smoother there is one thing that you can do all you have to do is just simply select all of these keyframes now let's go to the graph editor and right now i'm using the speed edit speed graph not the value graph so make sure that you are using this as well now once you are inside the graph i am going to select all of these points like that now you can right click over here we have this option for keyframe velocity now under this we have this option called continuous so just make sure that this is checked now just click on ok now with that option selected you can just simply zoom in so i can probably zoom in over here now i can select these keyframes and i can just lift them up a little bit like that now you will notice that our camera is like coming and we have this like bump over here so the main idea is to like make this as smooth as possible so i'm going to like just make it like this smooth so here you can see our camera will come and you can see that it won't stop but actually it will like slowly and slowly it will move to the next frame like that 
but again over here it will stop because we have to fix this as well so again we can select these and let me just quickly move this up we can probably move this up as well like this and we can smooth this curve out perfect so here we, you will see that we are moving to this image and after that we will move to this one and again we can do the same thing over here as well let's just play around with these and we can move this like a little bit further apart now again this is something that you can play around on your own so you can see that it, it moves to this image and after that it's like goes to the other one now if you want to make this stay then you can just like make this even smoother and make this like a little bit far away there you go now you have made the motion smoother and the camera won't stop anywhere so once you're done with this we are ready to enable our background so let me just quickly enable this out now in the same way we have all of these images which you can like just keep on adding and just keep on moving and once you're done with this we are ready to add some depth of field to this now in order to access the depth of field you can just simply click on this icon and from here we can go under the camera options and over here we have this depth of field make sure that this is turned on now it won't nothing will happen because we have to play around with a couple of these settings so the aperture is the amount of blur so if i increase this up you can see that everything gets blur and we can play around with the focus distance to keep things which we want in the focus so in order to do, the, do that let me just quickly play around with the aperture so i don't want like to be this blur so let's add a keyframe for the focus distance so once we are at this point you can see that we are looking at this image and here we can probably zoom in now you can play around with the focus distance and you will notice that your image will become sharper as you like play around with it so you can see that it is getting blurry now if i increase the value you can see that it will become sharp and after a certain point again it will start becoming blurry so once it is like completely sharp you can like probably stop over there because that's the focal distance between the camera and that image now let's go to the other keyframe again you can see that this is already sharp but if you want to confirm this you can probably zoom in like a lot and then you can like play around with these this focus distance and you can see that now it is a lot sharper so this is the perfect focus distance for this one as well now let's move to the third one and you can see that this is quite blurry so we can play around with it and let me just quickly increase this value and you can see that it is getting more blurred now i can decrease this and you will notice that it will become sharper and sharper so that means we have to decrease this value you can see that the image is a lot sharper just like that so after that we can go to the last image and you can see that it is quite blurred and just play around with the focus distance so if i increase this up you can see that it is getting sharper there you go now our image is like completely in focus and you can see that so now if i press play you can see we are like moving through these images and just going to all of these one by one and the background is like a little bit smaller so we can play it out let's press s and i'm going to just scale this up and we can probably like move it here and there now if that this is distracting then you can probably low down its opacity like that or you can like probably have some curves or levels whatever you want to add just drag it onto this and just make it like a little bit darker like that so in this way you will only be focusing on these images which are at the front like that now there's one more thing that you can do we can add some light leaks to this now in order to enhance this more i already have this light leak footage which you can like drag and drop so if i drag it over here now this is completely free and i'll put a link in the description for where you can download this all you have to do is just simply change its mode to screen or whatever you want and after that just play around with the opacity and let's just set this to like 30 or something so now if i press play you can see that we have this very smooth motion and we have this camera following through all of these pictures with this really nice light leaks and this is how you can create these kind of very pretty slideshows and you can like showcase whatever memories you want so i hope you learned something from this video and the project files for this tutorial is available on patreon so if you're supporting me over there then you can download it from there and if you're not then you might consider it because you will get access to the tutorial project files and exclusive templates that are available only on patreon so with that being said my name is abhishek and i'll see you in the next one